All right, this is the first of three lectures regarding the hip uh, joint and the pelvic girdle. Uh, there'll be three for the hip, three for the knee, three for the ankle. So nine total for module four. So th we're moving into the lower extremity and um, you can see here that we have the, the pelvic girdle here, which is the pelvis uh, sacrum. And this is the uh, transition from the axial skeleton into the appendicular skeleton. Uh, we have our femur here, uh, and then the knee, and then down below we have our uh, ankle and foot complex. This is a posterior view, and you can see the sacrum, you can see the pelvis, you can see the femur, and quite a bit of anatomy. So um, one of the things to point out is that uh, when we get to the muscles, that most of the muscles here are in the thigh, and they, uh, uh, they affect both hip movement and knee movement. So there'll be quite a bit of uh, overlap between hip and knee. And then same thing, we move knee to ankle. So here's the pelvic girdle. Um, we have a pelvis, the innominate, left and right halves. There's a pubic symphysis here, so this is separate. This is one bone, this is another bone. We have our sacrum and our coccyx, and from here we have our lumbar spine, and we have our femurs coming out of uh, either side of those sockets. The pelvis uh, one half is actually made up of three bones fused. It's the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. And together, this makes one half of the pelvis. You can kind of see that here again. You can see the overlap here. Um, there's really no um, no cartilage, nothing. This is fused by the time you're born by an adult. And so this is one bone, but it was three bones at one point. Um, right here is the hip socket. This is where the head of the uh, femur sits in. Here's a view straight on. Um, you can see that inguinal ligament here, which was the base of most of the abdominal musculature from a previous lecture, a previous module. Again, sacrum, this is where L5 would be, and then L4, L3, each half of the pelvis, and you have two of the femur. Uh, for the rest of the slides, though, we have the um, same image, but just rotated slightly to the right and up a little bit, so we can kind of appreciate the bowl-like um, bottom of the uh, of the musculature. So here we go here with some of the relative uh, anatomy for number one here. This is the inguinal ligament. That was that ligamentous structure that went from the pubic bone to the uh, ASIS, which is another aspect here, this anterior superior iliac spine, so ASIS. Um, this was the foundation for the transverse abdominis and the uh, external oblique, internal oblique. Um, these are the uh, ASIS, the anterior superior leg spine. Uh, if you were to stand up and, and feel for your pelvic bone, this is the most prominent aspect here. You would actually feel this component here. And this is the uh, superior uh, iliac spine. And then just below it is the inferior iliac spine, so the AIIS. These are commonly referred to as ASIS and AIIS. And these are the parts. And the reason why these are actually protrude is that there's quite a bit of muscular attachment into each of these uh, points, the ASIS and the AIS. Here over here, we see the um, sacroiliac joint from the ilium and the sacrum. Um, as we talked about in the previous module, there is in the sagittal plane some flexion and extension. We refer to it as nutation and counternutation. Uh, but in this transverse plane and in the frontal plane, because of the bony relationship here, there's not a quite a quite a bit of movement there. And then another landmark here, this is the equivalent of uh, a, verte a vertebral disc. You have your pubic symphysis. This is the crest of the ilium here. So uh, it's an anchor, or at least a, a reference point for some of the muscular attachments. Um, here is the ramus of the uh, pubis, and again, an anchor for uh, muscular attachments. Here's your ischial tuberosity, or the, uh, the uh, sits bone. This is the part when you're sitting down, you put a pressure on here, that's the ischial tuberosity. Um, over here at the femur, I have another view with the uh, more detailed anatomy, but you can see here, this is your lesser trochanter. This is where the, um, the iliac and the psoas comes in and attach. And then over here you have a greater trochanter, which where most of your glute muscles come in and attach there. So here's one half of the pelvis removed. Uh, here is the head of the femur. This is the actual ball of the ball and socket joint for the uh, for the femur. Uh, this is the femoral neck, and then here is the uh, the bone, the femur itself. Here, the collaboration of the three bones: the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. Uh, this makes the acetabulum. 
And you can see it again all together here with both femur, uh, the socket of the ball into the, I'm sorry, the head of the ball into the socket, the acetabular joint. Um, this just represents the muscular attachments. And you can see that big bulk of the musculature is in the thigh. Then we have these little bit of attachments here, but most of this is the iliac. Um, on the inside here is, uh, is going to be where the abdominals come in and attach. Uh, you're going to have your glute and glute medius on the outside here. So most of the attachments uh, are down here in the thigh, but you are getting a few of the musculature starting here in the pelvis and the bowl itself. Again, straight on again, anterior view, you can see the iliacus is the primary, but for the most part, most of the bulk of the muscles are, is actually on the femur itself. So here's a posterior view, uh, slightly tilted forward, lifted up a little bit, so a little space there. And you can see on the left side just the bony structure. On the right side, some of the ligamentous structure is left. And we'll talk about some of those things here. So here's your sacrum and your ilium, which again makes the SI joint. This here, this band of tissue, is called the sarcotubulus ligament. And that is also combined with the posterior sarcoiliac ligament. So the sarcotubulus ligament um, right here at the ischial tuberosity, this is where your hamstring uh, attaches, your, your hamstring group, and the fascia comes up here and can, is consistent with the multifidus. So it makes a kinetic chain between the back, in through the sacrum, down through this ligament here, and down into the leg muscle here. So this is quite a big a relay station for this ligamentous structure that goes from the sacrum to the uh, ischial tuberosity. Uh, a posterior view, you can see the greater trochanter. Again, you get a lot of muscles that are attaching here. And then the lesser trochanter here, which is the anchor point for the iliopsoas. Again, you can see the femoral neck. And um, you can't see the head of the acetabular or the head of the femoral because it's it's uh, encased in the acetabulum. Here on the posterior view, now you can appreciate quite a bit of musculature. Uh, here are your glute medius, glute max. And uh, you can see the attachment sites down here. And we'll go through those details in the next, uh, next couple lectures. So the hip joint is really referred to as the femoral, coming from the femur, acetabular joint, the FA. So that is the uh, pelvis moving uh, with the femur. And we usually look at the pelvis moving stable and the femur moving for like hip flexion, hip abduction, hip internal external rotation. But um, uh, as we're going to see in the next lecture, that we can have the pelvis moving on the, um, on the femur. But basically, here's your anatomy again, your greater crotranter, your lesser trochanter here, femoral neck, femur, and then the joint contact surface. And you can kind of see uh, where the synovial cartilage is at here, or the, I'm sorry, the, the hyaline cartilage. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of surface area that makes contacts between the hip and the uh, pelvis. The most immediate surface are these ligaments that, that hold the femur to the pelvis. And you have the pubofemoral uh, ligament. You have this iliofemoral ligament. And it's basically referring to the bone that it's, uh, and ligaments are usually named for the two bones that they're connecting. And that's what makes a ligament a ligament is it connects bone to bone. So the pubofemoral is coming from the pubic bone to the femur. The iliofemoral ligament is going from the um, from the femur to the ilium, and then not l listed here is the ischiofemoral. Um, this iliofemoral ligament, uh, because it has two branches and it's shaped like a Y, is sometimes referred to as the Y ligament. And then here, from a posterior view, you can see the again the iliofemoral ligament, the backside of that Y, and then you have the ischial from the ischium ischiofemoral ligament. So you have the three bones that make up the pelvis, the pubis, the uh, ilium, and the ischium. And then the, you have a ligament, all three, that, that make up a majority of the joint socket or the uh, ca capsule um, that keeps the head of the femur tightly congruent with the pelvis. So this is a uh, view, uh, a lateral view of the uh, femur that's been reflected back. You can see that it was cut along the line here. This is part of the joint capsule. And the socket uh, was pulled apart. And what the, um, what the head of the femur is actually sitting into is this uh, acetabulum. But there's a labrum. There's a connective tissue that gives it more depth. Uh, so this labrum is uh, quite an important structure uh, for stability and for, and for, um, for function and for movement. Um, quite a bit of injuries that ha happen here with like labral tears. Um, 
and then you have this round ligament here that's like a cord that keeps the again head of the femur tightly in this socket there. Here's a cross section and you can see uh, this is where that connective tissue is at how much surface area is created from that uh, acetabular labrum. So there's quite a bit of depth, quite a bit of penetration here, and we'll compare this in when we get to the upper extremity of how little contact actually exists in the shoulder and how much contact actually exists down here in the hip. And that has to do with the amount of load bearing that we have through here. Right? We have all these loads coming through the hip here, and so we need to have a nice, tight, congruent, lots of contact, lots of surface area. So that's it for the structure of the uh, hip. Um, Make sure you're reviewing pages 219 to 225, uh, looking at some of the structural components. Um, any of the things I highlighted here in the slides and the video are, 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 the, are the important features like the SI joint and those bony landmarks, and particularly those three ligaments that connect the uh, femur from the, the hip.